Okay. Where is it? Today we're gonna make a guanciale seasoning. So I don't have real guanciale, but I've devised a seasoning that allows you to take regular pork belly and turning it to turn it into something that's very convincingly like guanciale. And it's low FODMAP, and it's gluten-free, and I don't know why it would not otherwise be dairy-free, but it is also dairy-free. And I think the key is sort of in the seasoning layering process. again real quick I made this not too long ago for a carbonara which was very good but very salty and it was partly very salty due to the salt content of the guanciale so I'm gonna cut back on that a little bit but I'm gonna use generally the same sort of method that I used uh, for the last time I did this there's not a ton of fat on the top, but I'm just gonna do this anyway. I kind of like to score my pork belly anytime I work with it, even if I'm not gonna cook it instantly. Um, I think it can't hurt in the pursuit of adding seasonings. That's scored. So we're gonna start with a bit over a tablespoon of Yeah. Bit over a tablespoon. Cause this is more than a it's a little bit more than a pound. I was working with about a pound last time. Uh, no, I was working with two pounds. Oh well. Um, two tablespoons of dextrose powder. Um, I didn't originally get this for cooking. Uh, maybe I'll go slightly less than the recipe says because I was. I did that for two pounds. Huh. No, I'll just make the whole thing anyway. And if I don't use it, then I don't use it. I had bought this because I was getting extremely exhausted during workouts, like more exhausted than was than was uh, safe or necessary based on the amount of effort that I was putting out. And I was talking to one of my friends who was uh, very into working out, and he was like, maybe you're not getting enough, maybe you're not signaling sugars properly. So we found a low FODMAP sugar. Dextrose, as it turns out, is low FODMAP. So I took a tablespoon of that, put it in like eight ounces of water, completely solved the problem. But I had this gigantic ass tub of dextrose and I don't use it that much, but it's actually become kind of useful in cooking these days. I've been using it, throwing it in things. It's pretty interesting. Um, okay, half a teaspoon of ground coriander. This is where This is where the real flavor is in this particular season. Oh, in this seasoning, yeah. This stuff is, this kind of makes the dish. Uh, a teaspoon of ground pepper. Uh, 
little bit more. There. Ground, burned, down. Aha. So a lot of things that require garlic, but you want to make them taste garlicky, but you can't add garlic or onion in your low FODMAP. This. It's called Asa Fetida. And it's extremely pungent, so you can't use a ton of it. Like, I used less than an eighth of a teaspoon. That's a lot. This is a ton. I've used, I've made dishes that use this kind of front and center, and they've only had like a quarter of a teaspoon. It's just extremely pungent, so you gotta be sparing with it. It'll last you a long time, but oh man, you can make so many dishes taste, uh, taste a bit more garlicky and oniony than you otherwise would be able to on the low FODMAP diet, and it is so helpful. And a teaspoon of dried rosemary. Um, I'm going dried, I think it works. Works fine for these purposes. Plus I didn't have like real rosemary. That would probably be a little bit more authentic, but. <coughs> mm. Oh, I just inhaled some. At the end of the day, you're making a rub, right? So if it's a rub, come on, it's a, it's a fucking rub. <laughs> Powdered things for rubs are kind of ideal. As a matter of fact, I may have even been able to go for a finer salt than this coarse kosher salt. Maybe that was part of the problem. Hmm. That could have been part of the problem with the last time I made this. Um, it was extremely salty, but what I, I didn't really let it cure for very long, so I didn't have much of an opportunity to like scrape off extra salt. Um, I'm going to let this cure a little bit longer, though. Well, I'm going to cure this partially a lot longer. But I've got a method to what I'm about to do. So, this is where the effort sort of comes in. Not using the whole thing quite yet. But what I want to do... is I want to get like every nook and cranny of this thing and I want to be able to get as much flavor on it as possible. I really want to maximize, maximize flavor. I want to maximize flavor town action here. We're going to flavor town boys. Basically my method here is I'm pouring, coating aggressively, like really try and get it in. Hello, Lilykins. Hello, beautiful. Uh, coat the sides. Well, there's not much of a side to be had there. Um, Lily, you're fine. Lilykins, you little toddler. You little toddler puppy, you. Okay. Okay. Now, I remove the grate. Remove the grate. Pour it back in. Put this guy back and repeat. Now when I did this last time, which was only a couple days ago, um, I think I might have done this, what, Friday or Saturday perhaps? What I did was I took this rack and I left it in the fridge 
for about three hours and that's all I did, but it came out extremely well seasoned. It came out certainly too salty, but there was no lack of flavor in the meat. And I think it has to do with how you, how I sort of press in this, this rub as opposed to like, oh, gently sort of rub here and there. No, the pressing I think is where, the pressing is where it's at. And it allows you to get really, really strong, flavorful pancetta or guanciale flavoring in a pretty short amount of time if you don't really have a whole lot of time. Um, but I have time with this. Actually, what I'm gonna do is after this, I'm gonna cut this in half we're gonna put some in the fridge and then we're gonna freeze the other half. So I wonder what this other half is gonna be like at the end here. I'm curious to see, it seems like a lot of my extra, yeah, a lot of this is extra kosher salt that maybe I don't need to really be super committed to keeping on, keeping on the pork. Yeah, this I think I can safely discard. We got so much of the rest of the, so much of the rest of the um, seasoning on the pork, which is, which is really great. That's a very good thing. No problem. Right. I think I want to cut it this way. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's really gorgeous. Okay. Now, for the fun part. Here we go. There we go. This is definitely a favorite cooking toy of mine. I haven't sous vide anything in a little while. I've got, I've got a couple of toys for sous vide, the vacuum sealer being one of them. But this thing is just really useful um, outside of sous vide. It does a really good job of, well, honestly, it's just incredibly satisfying to watch when it works. Like, check this out. Airtight, dry. Mm. How beautiful is that? Always do a second seal. Always do a second seal. All right. How cool is that? How cool is that? Like, come on. That's just badass, man. I'm looking right here, and I'm thinking I'm very glad I did a double seal right above there. Very glad I did just a double seal. Glad enough, in fact, to do a second. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, okay. Guanciale. What is it? Eleven. Nine, twenty, twenty. Voila, due guanciale, molto bene.